Add a new labor. MaxTrax comes preloaded with labor services you can use and edit as needed, but as you use this system, you'll be creating many more. Let me show you how. First, you can create these new labor services ahead of time from the menu bar, click Manager, and select Manage Labor Service List, which opens the labor search with all of the preloaded labor services here. We can add, edit, or delete a service from the master list, and we can also add a new labor service from within a repair order just as you need them. The process is the same, just how you access the Add a Labor Service wizard is different. From here, you would click the Add Labor Service button and start the wizard, but let's get to the wizard from within the repair order. So let's close and open a repair order and add a labor to replace this alarm system. I just type A for the search and I don't have alarm listed. So here, I would click that same button we just saw under Manage Labors, Add Labor Service to start the wizard. First, we have to select the type of labor, flat rate or menu priced. Most labor services I find are billed out as flat rate labor, a certain amount of hours or tenths of an hour multiplied by the shop's hourly rate. Menu price labors are for jobs where the labor price is a fixed dollar amount that may or may not include parts, like a 1995 oil change or a $99 brake special, that kind of thing. The dollar amount is really unassociated with the actual labor times it takes to do the job. It just reflects what you have on your menu. So let's run through the wizard both ways so you can see the difference and know how to create both. So click the flat rate radio button first and then click next. Enter a labor code for the labor service that follows an established labor coding convention. The convention you come up with should be easy to follow and easy to remember. You wouldn't want your codes to begin with R for repair as a search would just bring up everything that included the word repair. So a suggestion, make the first letter of the code be the first letter of the component you're working on, like B for breaks. Make the second letter represent a description of the component, like location. So the code for replacing the front brakes might be BFR, brakes front replace, representing the component worked on, the description next, and the labor operation last. I've also seen folks use numbers for these labor codes. I just have no idea how they ever remember them. Now enter a short description of the labor service to appear on the list when searching for a labor service. This short description, up to 25 characters, is also what appears on the repair order, on screen. This will automatically fill the printed description section so you can just edit or continue writing up your detailed printed description. Now this section is what actually prints on the RO. And remember, you can add to and edit this description once you've added it to the RO to customize it as needed for each situation. Enter the number of build rate hours in tenths to be charged to the customer for performing this labor service, and then the flat rate hours to be paid to the technician. Most shops just let the product code for their labor services default to the GL, or General Labor Product Code. Click Select and let's see our options. As you can see here, I also have DL for Diagnostic Labor, so I can track separately how much of my labor sales are generated by diagnostic work. So any diagnostic labor codes I have in the system have this DL product code. You can create as many different product codes as you like. And notice one other thing about these product codes. I track my diagnostic labor sales on my general ledger in the same account as my general labor, 41,000. Having a separate product code with the same general ledger account keeps the sales in the same section on my financials, but I can run labor reports based on product code to total them separately. Now under my tire labor product code, I've created a separate general ledger account to track those sales, 41,100, so not only can I run a labor report to see my tire labor sales separately, I also track my tire sales in a separate account on my general ledger. And this means I have tire sales broken out on my profit and loss statement and financial reports as well. Let's close. Check the Make Taxable at Current Tax Rate box if labor in your area is taxed, and the system will automatically apply sales tax to these labor services on the invoice. We could also set the default to always have this box checked for new labor services under the Setup section. 
Click the Next button to go to the pricing screen. Or we could click Back at any point to review or edit your previous entries in the wizard. Now check the Use Shop Rates box to apply the standard labor rates for the shop to the build rate hours of this labor. Or for custom pricing of this labor, enter a dollar amount for each pricing level as needed. Custom labor rates are often used to charge a higher rate for more technical labor services, like computer diagnostics or performance work. Click the Finish button to save the new labor service record. Now let's do one for menu price labor. Same start. Click Add Labor Service. Click Menu Price Labor this time. Enter a code. How about ALIHT for Heavy Truck Alignment? and we can leave the short and printed description the same. Click Next, and here's what's different. Enter just the flat rate hours, the hours to be paid to your technicians. See, no build hours here. We'll just leave this on the general labor for our product code, and we're not taxable, so just click Next. Now here we enter a dollar amount to be charged to the customer for this labor. And remember, the flat rate hours for this labor service used to calculate technician hours are unrelated to this amount. For example, an alignment might be $89.95 on the menu. And remember, we just entered 1.2 hours for our technician, and at $90 an hour, using the flat rate method, we would be charging our customer $108. But we're going to charge less to our customer for this more competitive labor service, but still pay our technician 1.2 hours. Now click the Add Part or Placeholder button and select a part or a part placeholder. Selecting Add Part will just open the parts inventory list and we can pick a part number from there. Or use a placeholder that you'll replace on the RO once you know what specific part you need for the job. Enter the placeholder description or click Select and choose from the placeholder list. Enter the quantity, price, and click OK. Now the total menu price is set and clicking this menu labor will add the labor and the part or the part placeholder to the RO for the menu price entered here. And we'll click finish. Note here, the parts or part placeholders on the menu labor are optional. We don't have to add parts to a menu labor. But remember, if you selected a part placeholder, the system is designed to have you replace that placeholder with a stock part on the RO before the RO can be completed and paid if you're tracking your inventory. At that time, you will have the option to charge the customer the actual part price or stay with the total menu price labor. Last, the Edit and Delete buttons here are for this master labor list, and if you delete a labor from this list, it's gone forever and cannot be undeleted. So let's click Close, and this concludes the lesson on Add a New Labor.